What is your reading of the uh, uh, of the situation in South Africa regarding a, a, a triple peace compared to the rest of Africa? So maybe I'll start by saying the reason why um, banks and lenders trust triple P's is because as a framework, now every, every um, sovereign in every country has got a, a different PPP framework and they've got some similarities, but some may be more cumbersome than others. Um, but as a framework, it's been proven to deliver large infrastructure projects, right? And the reason why that's so is because it, it provides a mechanism by which to get buy-in, formal, written, documented buy-in from both sides what you talked about, public sector, understanding what they want, documenting in detail what they need. I and mean, if I show you some of the early PPPs, the, the roads and the hospital PPPs and the prison PPPs that were done in South Africa, the output specification from government is extremely detailed. I mean, government will, 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 will specify to the teaspoon what the specification needs to look like. This room needs to be of this size. It needs to house this many people. And, you know, the specification is clear. And where you've got that, you've got a very clear understanding from government what they are buying, whether they're paying for it or not, what they're going to get, right? That's, that's important. And the documentation for that, the documentation, the, the pedantic documentation of that is extremely important. Um, and I'll, I'll use Bait Bridge as an example as well. Um, but the, the documentation of what are you getting as government, right? Because these projects are so long term, it sucks. It it proceed, It 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 succeeds any government at the time, right? So you 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 build a border, for example, with the government at the time, or you procure a, a border with a, a president at the time, and five or six years later, there's a different there's a different president there. There's a whole completely different cabinet. Um, the PPP framework in multiple jurisdictions has been opened up for challenge multiple times. And it has stood this, the test of time in that because of its pedancy in the, in the level of documentation, it's clear what the intention was at the time, who gave what money, who's entitled to what, who can hold who accountable for what level of delivery. It is an, it's a clear mechanism for holding both sides of the table accountable for what they're supposed to deliver. I cannot stress the importance of that because um, even at the banks, I mean, we, we lend money against these projects for 18 years sometimes, right? So in the South African context, we're giving 18, 20-year debt. I'm not going to be there in 10 years' time when somebody comes and looks at this uh, loan documentation and says, what was, what was the intention? But provided that it's sufficiently documented for, anybody can pick up a, a concession agreement, anybody can open it up for challenge, a new government can come in and say, um, why did we build this border? It's so expensive. It's inefficient. It's easy 10 years down the line to forget that there were 12 kilometers worth of queues before we put the border in place and before we upgraded the, the infrastructure and made it all shiny and beautiful. It's easy to forget why the, the objective, what the objective was in putting a piece of infrastructure in place at, at, you know, at the time. South African roads, great example, you know, um, uh, the, I mean, the roads you put on, South African road network is one of the, the best maintained uh, on the continent. You go anywhere else, and that's why it's also such an important trade route for, I mean, a lot of the um, commodities that are making their way from our, from our borders all the way through to our like, regional trade partners are, tr are trucked on road. Um, and that's because we've got road infrastructure mm -hmm. that's well maintained by the private sector, um, that allows government to hold private sector accountable mm. for potholes and or issues that are, arise for safety, for oil spills, you, you name it, right? Um, and so that's why as a, as a lending community and as banks, we, we trust that a well-structured PPP is something that you can put 20-year money behind, right? Because you know that it stands the test of time. The rigor of the process, the, the involvement of national treasury um, gives comfort that all the way through the ranks of government, they follow the process properly, they understand what they're buying, they'll pay when they need to, and the private sector will pay. Gautrain, fantastic example. The Gautrain was actually a project for which the government had the bulk of the money. I think uh, the government provided 60% of the, of the capex required for Gautrain, but they wanted the rigor of the project financing machine to be applied, and that's why they did it as a PPP. So while the banks were providing a, small, a smaller quantum than what government was, um, still huge numbers at the time, right? It's huge, even in today's context, huge numbers. 
the rigor of um, multiple people having a look at this and, you know, bankers and all their advisors, lawyers, combing through all the documentation, making sure processes have been followed, documenting in painstaking detail, all these things, made it such that when the Khao train had issues around water ingress, around the, the, the land parcels being delivered at different times, you can go to the document and you can say, this is what we agreed. And it holds everybody accountable, government and private sector alike. And it's not to say that there aren't issues. It's not to say that the PPP framework isn't cumbersome and lengthy and difficult to adhere to and difficult to register processes and uh, takes a long time. But it's to say that once you get a PPP and, you, and you, you're able to conclude one, it stands the test of time. It is something that you can crowd in um, public and private capital um, to raise large sums of money for what's required in terms of infrastructure. And, and the reason why um, it's usable for many forms of infrastructure is because the numbers are so big that invariably, as you, as you, as you go um, through the continent, sovereigns run out of fiscal space to lend directly on their balance sheets. They then need to crowd in private sector money. 